Today I'm going to go over three different mechanisms for watering your seedlings and telling you the pros and cons of each. Which one you choose is going to work best for you and your lifestyle along with what seeds you're growing. So let's get into it. Method number one is my favorite and that is simply bottom watering. This is typically done with a tray below the seed starting tray that has a lot of water. Now when we bottom water we actually don't want to fill the tray up to its entirety. Instead we just want the bottom of those cells to be able to touch water. When there's no true leaves on the seedlings yet we want to just provide straight water with no fertilizer. There's really no need for fertilizer at this time. All we need to do is simply fill up that bottom tray so it's just touching the bottom of our cell. This will allow water to be soaked up through capillary action and give it to continual flow. I find this mechanism to be a good place between a continual water supply and having to water on a constant basis by upkeeping it over time. What I tend to find is that the roots will eventually make their way into this bottom tray and colonize the area. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this and it's a great way for the plant to get its water needs without being restricted by what's in that small cell. So bottom watering is something that I use and have used for years and will continue to use well into the future. It helps ensure that there is not too much moisture in the event that you have a fan and are using vermiculite on that soil surface but also allows enough moisture that we're not going to get desiccation from lack of moisture in that soil. The next method is a wicking mat. A wicking mat is often used used in trays that are larger in size. So I will classically use these for nursery pot setups when I go to bump up my seedlings. A wicking mat, again, works through capillary action, can supply fertilizer for those larger pots, and classically is meant to supply continual form of water. Now, what I will say is in an ideal situation, we don't want the roots penetrating into that mat because it's obviously going to wreck the mat over time. So we want to use a wicking mat, again, on these nursery pots or larger style containers. A wicking mat allows us to deliver fertilizer and another and other bits and bobs. This can be used in an outdoor setting as well as an indoor setting and will allow you to continually keep your plants watered with a five gallon bale bucket on the side or some form of a large reservoir where you will not need to check on the seedlings repeatedly over and over again. The next method is misting. Now misting is commonly used for smaller size seeds. Seeds that will be disrupted from water being dribbled on top or from too much moisture in the soil system through bottom watering or the wicking mat. So when we mist, we'll classically use this when growing in straight vermiculite with smaller sized flower seeds. The misting will allow us to apply a lukewarm water, which is very important when we're trying to get some of these tropical seeds to germinate. I don't typically use this method because I don't grow a ton of flowers from seed in my home, but if you were doing petunias or some more delicate seeds, then this is a great choice. The mister, again, does not need to contain fertilizer until you get some true leaves on the plants. Misting I don't find to be a long-term situation and will not saturate the soil all the way to the bottom. So therefore it's something that can be used temporarily while germinating seeds. Some methods that you may want to steer away from when starting seeds is direct watering. Direct watering will actually disrupt the soil and may move your seeds around in the cell, forcing them deeper into the cell or switching the cell entirely. This may result in more than one seedling per cell than what you intended or or it may result in slow germination or lack of germination. So I try to avoid top watering whenever possible for that purpose. Some things you're gonna see with the wicking and with the top watering method, with the bottom watering methods, is a development of what looks like salt. This is completely normal and is often found in coconut coir based potting soils just because there is some salinity that comes along with that. I would not be concerned with it. The other thing you tend to see is a little bit of fuzzy stuff. Now the fuzzy stuff in some cases is mycelium additions that have been placed in the potting soil or additions you yourself have put in over time. Mycelium isn't a bad thing, it just can actually physically represent itself on the soil surface in shallower sized dish in humid, in humid conditions. So this little fuzzy stuff is very natural to come when we are bottom water or wicker, wick watering because of that excess continual moisture. But honestly when it comes down to seedlings and what you're choosing to do, the key here is continuous water exposure. We don't want that soil to dry out. So the method you choose is going to be the method that works best for you. There's truly no wrong or right way to do this. If you want a video on fertilizing seedlings, please let me know down below. And always don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It lets me know you guys are enjoying the video and supports the channel. So happy growing and spring is on the way.